In this video, I'm going to talk about the important uh, definitions that we are going to encounter in seismic design of structures in general. And I'm going to give definition for important items such as stiffness, strength, ductility, overstrength, damping, demand, and supply. These are considered to be the most important items that need to be understood well and defined well before going and indulging into the seismic design of structure. So let's go directly to a general uh, or we can say an intro to this uh, video. So we need to understand what is or what are the main important uh, uh, items that we are going to deal with if we are going to uh, design the structure seismically or make the structure to be uh, a, a, a kind of uh, seismic or earthquake resistant structure, we need to uh, understand three main items which is considered to be the most important items or we can call them the basic building blocks of understanding and controlling earthquake response of structures are stiffness, strength, and ductility. These are the main three items that you need to understand first. And I'm going to give a direct definition here right now. And then I'm going to elaborate more on each of them, on each item later on. And even in the uh, next lectures and next videos, I'm going to elaborate on each item of them so that we have a complete understanding and a complete picture of each item of it. Stiffness is the most pertinent parameter in responding to requirements of serviceability under the small frequent earthquake. Look here, this is the definition. It is like a little bit different than the definition that we used in structure mechanics, for example, or structure analysis, right? Here it is, I'm, I'm putting it in the context of seismic design. So whenever that you hear or read the word stiffness, and the context of seismic design of a structure, remember serviceability, always. Serviceability, which is related to, if you want to think about serviceability in terms of uh, deformation, deflection, cracks, something like this, then stiffness should be, uh, should be recalled, should be investigated in this case. So stiffness and serviceability, they are linked. Okay. And the point is, another point in this definition is what? Under the small frequent earthquake. So this is another part, another side of the definition. That stiffness not only linked with the serviceability, but also linked with the type of the ground excitation or the demand, as we're going to explain it later and define it later. So it is related to the small, small frequent earthquake, okay? So this is the definition of the stiffness. Now, even that this aggregate or, you know, the understanding, the clear understanding of stiffness going to be understood using some examples and some other uh, uh, concepts that need to be uh, explained. But here we want to link the item itself with the most or the important or the most relevant item or uh, part in seismic design. So it is stiffness linked with serviceability and linked with small frequent earthquakes. Number two is the strength. Strength is utilized to control the level of inelasticity under the medium-sized infrequent earthquakes. Hence, it maps onto the damage control limit state. Again, what is the meaning of strength? Here it is utilized to control the level of what? Yes, this is the first word that we can say. This is the keyword. Let me highlight it here. Oh, it doesn't work. I don't know why. So anyway, the word inelasticity, this is the keyword here. Strength is going to work or going to be linked with the inelasticity range or stage of the response of the structure. Under medium-sized infrequent earthquakes we are talking about medium sized remember here in stiffness we were talking about small frequent earthquake 
Here, this is medium sized infrequent earthquake. So, whenever we are talking about the strengths of the structure, we should always link it with the inelasticity of the structure and the medium sized infrequent earthquakes, and then this maps onto the damage control limit state, controlling of the damage. Okay? Then, after that, we're going to talk about ductility. The word ductility, in the context of seismic design, ductility under the large, rare earthquake affects the structure collapse prevention limit state. This is straightforward here. So ductility under the large, rare earthquake. So there are two links here. The first one is linked, the first one is linked with the earthquake uh, magnitude or the how large the earthquake is we're talking about large rare earthquake this is the ductility this is where that we are going to control the collapse of the structure okay so now let's revisit everyone uh, every item that i have defined here stiffness we're talking about small frequent earthquakes related to serviceability strengths it is related to medium-sized infrequent earthquake, and it, it is related to the damage control limit state. Ductility is related or linked with large rare earthquakes, and it is linked with the collapse prevention limit state, the lost limit state, or the uh, most or the ultimate limit state that we are going to talk about. Okay, so this is the definition and these are the key words that we should understand whenever that we are discussing about or whenever that we use the word stiffness, strength, and ductility. Okay? Because they are interchangeable. These kind of uh, definitions commonly used in our, uh, in our structure analysis and structure mechanics as well. But I want you to understand it in the context of seismic design. These are the things that need to be uh, uh, understood before going and indulging into the seismic design of structures. Okay, based on the three item definitions that I have explained in the previous slide, there are two important quantities which are consequential to the three fundamental parameters dis uh, discussed above or discussed before in the previous slide, which is the stiffness, strength, and ductility. These are going to be Overstrength and damping. Overstrength and damping. And overstrength, what is the meaning of overstrength? Whenever we hear this word in our structure design and in seismic design, what is the meaning of it? Overstrength is a parameter used to quantify the difference between the required and the actual strength of a material or component or structure system. So remember well, because this is going to be used at different levels. I'm going to talk about the levels of the uh, member level and structural level and the system level. So remember here, the word overstrength can be used for the material, whether it's concrete, steel, composites, or any other material that you are going to use. And it can be used on, at the level of the component, whether it is a member, like a beam or a column, or connection and then it can be used at the level of the system which is the structure system okay the whole system whether it is moment resisting frame or bracing system or whatever so over strength is as i said it is difference the difference quantify the difference between required and the actual strengths what is the meaning of required required means that Whenever that you make the analysis of your structure, I think that I don't know why it is not working. Uh, so let's, sorry for this. <clears throat> so I hope that it works now. Yes, it is working now. So whenever that we are talking about the word here, yes, required and actual strings. For example, if you have a structure, if you have a structure, and you are making, putting your lateral load on this structure. Whenever this structure is going to be analyzed under static lateral loads, 
you are going to have some like different straining actions based on the lateral pattern or the lateral load pattern that you are using under this earthquake that you are considering okay the point here is that the required amount of demand or the required um, actions are those coming from the structure analysis structure or structural analysis okay however the actual strength is going to be provided by adding a beam this beam its strength may be 120 kilonewton meter for resisting moment however the structure analysis which is the required load is only 100 kilonewton meter so this means what we have an overstrength here which is 1.2 this is the overstrength factor which is 120 over 100 okay so that's that's the point that we want to understand regarding the overstrength it means the difference between this is a parameter okay to quantify the difference between the required and the actual strength whether for a material a component or a structural system okay now let's go to the damage uh, sorry for the damping the damping is utilized to characterize the ability of structure to dissipate energy during dynamic response okay what is the meaning of this whenever i'm going to talk about damping here you're going to find the word energy and dissipate or dissipation these are two important keywords whenever we are talking about damping so damping means that we want to know how the structure is going to dissipate the energy that is coming or um, triggered by the earthquake during the dynamic analysis so this is the meaning of the damping okay the ability of structures to dissipate energy during dynamic response okay we are having different sources of damping i'm going to talk about them in detail later on but anyway we are having structured damping we have different sources of damping in our structures but anyway all of them they are going to represent the ability of the structure to dissipate energy okay for example the material of the structure is going to uh, give us a hint or giving us uh, what is the ability of the structure if the structure is made of concrete it is different than steel it is different than wood different than rubber different than composites so we are having a source of damping from the material we have another source of, of damping coming from the structure connections for example itself so we are going to talk about it in detail but only i want to give the definition which is the ability of a structure to dissipate energy okay now let's go to the next one and give more understanding about the uh, main important uh, definitions that we have given before but we're going to give it in and elaborate elaborate more on each item so let's talk about stiffness now in a bit more detail stiffness is the ability of a component or an assembly of components to resist deformations when subjected to actions okay so this is the straightforward definition ability of component or simply of components to resist deformation so the word deformation here comes and this is the common understanding of the of stiffness as we are already studied it before studied before so when subjected to actions whenever that we have any action any action that is applying on the structure then we are going to have the corresponding uh, drift or deformation then the relation between the two is going to be expressed through stiffness it is expressed as the ratio between action and deformation so now we started to understand there is a relation between the two we have action over deformation okay this is considered to be the stiffness and here 
we are going to find that this stiffness that we are talking about or the relation or the ratio between action and deformation, it is not constant for the same structure. It is going to be different. How it is going to be different? Let's look to this example here that we have. We have a structural wall, as you can see, and this structure wall, it is fixed at the bottom and we applied force at the top, okay? And this force is going to be applied monotonically, it means that it is going to increase step by step. And every step, there is a deformation corresponding to the applied level of force. Whenever we apply this kind of monotonic force on the system or structure, we can draw a relation between the deformation here and the base shear here. The base shear means that it is the whole resistance of the structure. Sorry, when, when we are going to apply it, it should be in the other direction. It's not here. So it should be in this direction if you are applying the, the force from here, okay, from the lift. So this relation between the deformation and the base shear, we call it the pushover curve. I'm going to talk about it also in very detail later on, but anyway, this is what we call it the push over curve. And in this push over curve, we have this straightforward relation that we are starting from zero here, and we are increasing the load monotonically until that we can find that the structure is going through different levels. The first part is seemingly to be linear. After that, it is going to be nonlinear. If we use uh, the laser pointer here. So as you can see here, it is almost linear. After that, it is taking another, the slope is going to be changed gradually and then gradually. And then we are going to find that the maximum value of the force here. And after this maximum value found that the strength of the structure is decreasing with the deformation and then we're going to find that we are going to reach the maximum or the ultimate deformation. Okay, so here we are controlling, we are looking to the structure, okay, as if that there is load is being applied on it and we are going to check the deformation with the application of this load and we are going to check the deformation versus the base shear of the structure. Base shear here means that it is the resistance of the structure, the resistance, because remember that we may apply the force here, but we found that the structure resistance is going to drop. So while that we are increasing the force here in this part until this point, we're going to find that the structure is starting to what? drop the load. Dropping the load means that the structure is not able anymore to withstand any further increase in the level of the force. So it starts to drop the load. Means that the force that I'm applying is not actually resisted. Part of it is going to be dropped through some mechanism or any type of deformation and cracks in this structure wall, for example. Okay, now for the stiffness that which is we are talking about, if we're going to look to the stiffness, the stiffness, as we said, it is the relation between or the ratio between the action and deformation. So here, if I'm going to talk about the stiffness at this point, at point I, so it is going to equal VI over delta I. And this is the elastic stiffness. And it seems to be linear here. And at the point of y, which means yield, after which there is an elastic response, the slope of this curve is going to be changed. Then we call this to be the yield, the yield point, where that v yield over delta yield would give us what we call it the initial also. Here this is the initial stiffness. So in the first linear part, you're going to find that the slope of the curve is the same until this point and the stiffness of the structure is the same, which is k initial. 
However, that after this point, we'll find that the slope of the curve is going to be changed gradually until that it reaches this point, which is the maximum point here. We call it point J. So between this point, until this point, we're going to find that the slope is like as if it is decreasing. So we call the slope here at each point which is changing with, with the deformation, we call this stiffness, we call it k tangent, which is the tangent stiffness. This is the meaning of tangent stiffness. The slope of the pushover curve or the base shear versus deformation relationship at any point that we want. And sometimes we are not interested in the slope at each point, but we want to draw a relation or we want to get the value of the stiffness at some specific point with relation to this origin point. So we are going to take one line that is connecting between the origin and the point of interest that we are, the point of interest that uh, we are interested to know the, uh, the stiffness at, then we are going to divide the value of the force, level of force here. For example, if we're talking about this point ultimate, then the K secant or the secant stiffness at this point is going to be V ultimate over delta ultimate okay so this means what that we have different types of stiffness we have initial stiffness which is we call it the elastic stiffness at the beginning stage of the application of the load on the system after that we use what we call it the tangent stiffness which means that the force at any point over the delta at this point okay and it is going to be changed. And after that, we have the secant stiffness. We have the secant stiffness. And the secant, secant stiffness that we are looking to the value of the force and the value of the deformation. And then the ratio between the two is going to give us the secant stiffness at this point. Okay? Okay. So that's the, the main definition of the stiffness. And understanding it of using this pushover curve of this structure wall that we are having here. Okay, now let's go to the strength or capacity. Strength is the capacity of a component or an assembly of components for load resistance at a given response station. So actually here, if you look here, this is the same curve that we used in the previous slide. So if we're talking about the capacity of, this, of the structure or the strength of the, uh, of the structure, it depends on which point that we are talking about. If I'm going to talk about the yield, which is this point, then the capacity of yield of the structure is going to be Vy, which is V yield. But if I'm going to talk about the maximum capacity that this structure or this system is going to reach, then I'm going to talk about this point, which is point J. Vj is considered to be the strength of the maximum strength of the structure or the system. But if I'm going to talk about the ultimate, which is the ultimate point of this pushover curve or this curve, then I'm going to talk about V ultimate. Okay, so also the strength is not constant value. It depends on which, which point that you are interested. And based on this point, you are going to give the corresponding strength or capacity. Okay? Strength or capacity. So the strength is the capacity of a component or an assembly of components. So it is only for one component. I mean that it, is, it can be described for at the level of the component or at the level of an assembly of components. For load resistance at a given response. So we are talking about the load resistance here. There is no ratio between anything. Just we're talking about the load resistance. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the next slide here, which is going to talk about the ductility. So for ductility, the definition is the ability 
of a component or an assembly of components to deform beyond the elastic, elastic limit. Take care of this, elastic limit. Now we are going to talk about this limit, elastic limit, and the deformation beyond this elastic limit. Okay, so what is this? It is the ratio between the maximum value of deformation quantity and the same quantity at the yield limit state. So from this curve, if I want to talk about the ductility of the system here, okay, okay, this curve, again, this curve can be for a system or for a component or for a element, an element, for example, okay? So here, if you look to the yield, we are interested in two points, the yield point, which is V yield and delta yield, and we are interesting, interested at the end point, which is the ultimate point here, which is delta ultimate. So delta ultimate over delta yield is considered to be this ductility factor. We call it the ductility factor, which is the ratio between the maximum value of a deformation quantity, whatever the deformation here that we are talking about, okay, and the same quantity at the yield limit. Here, this is the ultimate. Here, this is the yield. How we know this is the yield? After which the slope is changing gradually. Okay, so this is the ductility. Now we have an idea of the strength, stiffness, strength, and ductility. And we have an idea of what is the meaning of each one of them. Okay, stiffness, which is the ratio between the uh, base shear and the deformation at the point of interest, strength, it is the level of the force of the base shear at any point that we are interested in, ductility, it is the ratio between the ultimate deformation and the yield deformation. Okay, now let's go and understand another word that commonly used in seismic design also, which is demand, we call it the demand. Demand is the action or deformation imposed on a component or an assembly of components when subjected to earthquake ground motion. So whenever there is a ground motion is striking or hitting the structure, then the force applied on a structure from this earthquake excitation, we call it the demand. This is why we can call it seismic demand, okay? This demand is not constant. Again, this is very important. Some people think that the demand is constant. Actually, no, it is not constant. It continuously varies as the structural characteristics vary during an elastic response. Because if we go back here, during the inelastic response after the yield, the structure stiffness is going to be changed. This means that the structure is going to uh, the characteristics of the structure is going to be changed. Based on the structure characteristics, the seismic de demand is going to be changed as well. Okay, so this is the meaning of that the demand, demand is not constant. It continuously varies as the structure characteristics vary during inelastic response. It also varies with the characteristics of the input motion. So we have two things here. The seismic demand let me check here. Yes. So the seismic demand, we call this the seismic demand. Okay. It is going to be affected by two things. One part related to the structure itself, <clears throat> and the other part is related to the earthquake itself, EQ. Okay. So you have two sources that is going to change your seismic demand. If the structure is going to be changed during the inelastic stage, okay, or nonlinear stage, then the seismic demand is going to be changed. And this equation, uh, this uh, kind of earthquake, okay, which is controlled by, if we have this is the input earthquake, then based on this earthquake, the demand is going to be changed every time, right? So we have like different sources 
that is going to affect the seismic demand. Okay, now let's go to another important aspect, which is, we call it the supply. Okay, the supply. So I want only to emphasize here, seismic demand, it is related to what? Yes, the earthquake ground motion. It is important here. So we are talking about how much that the earthquake is going to provide, how much force, what is the level of the force that is going to be applied from the earthquake. But whenever that we say about the seismic demand, we found that the sources or the factors that is affecting the level of the seismic demand is not only coming from the earthquake, it is coming also from the structure itself. This means that if I have two structures, one of them is more ductile than the other, or one of them is more flexible than the other, for example, and both of them, they are exposed to the same earthquake, I am expecting to find that the seismic demand here is different than the seismic demand here. They are going to be different. For this structure, it would have seismic demand different than this structure. Okay? Okay. Now, for the supply, the supply is the action or deformation capacity of a component or an assembly of components when subjected to earthquake ground motion. So the supply is what? Action or deformation. Whenever the earthquake is going to be applied on, on any structure, this structure is going to deform. Okay? This deformation, we are going to call it the supply. Or the base shear that is going to be developed. This is also considered to be another type, another sort of supply. Okay. Okay, so the supply is the action or deformation capacity of a component or an assembly of components when subjected to earthquake ground motion. It represents the response of structure to demand. This is very important. Response to what? Demand. Demand is coming from the earthquake. Response coming from the structure itself. We're talking about the structure here. So this is the demand. This is the supply of the demand that is being applied. Okay. Do you remember here when I was talking about the pushover curve and I said that starting from this point, when we apply, when we try to apply more force, the structure cannot, cannot sustain these more forces, but the structure is what? Dropping the force. Here the force is the maximum, but here the force is decreasing. Why this decrease? This means that the supply of the structure is decreasing the supply of the structure that the structure is not able to provide the equal amount that is the seismic demand needs so it is going to decrease whenever the supply decreases the demand is going to decrease as well because we have change in the structure stiffness as well and the characteristics of the structure okay okay anyway this is a sidetrack but i just want to highlight it it may continuously vary as the structure characteristics change during an elastic response, similar to the demand in this point. It also varies with the characteristics of the input motion. For inelastic systems, demand and supply are coupled. That's very important. So again, we say that supply, similar to the demand, we can call this structural supply. As in the previous slide, we call the other demand, we call it seismic demand because it is or earthquake demand. It is related, it is the source, the main source here is structure. But it is affected, affected from what? Two things, also similar to the previous one, structure and the earthquake. So we have two different factors are affecting the supply and affecting the demand. As we said, seismic demand is affected by structure and earthquake. And in the case of structural supply, it is affected by structure, characteristics, and earthquake as well. Okay? And we said that for inelastic systems, demand and supply are coupled. 
they are coupled together. We cannot, they are like conjugates. They are complementing one another. Okay? They are making the right and left hands, uh, the, the right hand side and left hand side of the same equation. We need to be, it needs to be balanced. It needs to be balanced equation. So this is why they are coupled.